counting down to Christmas, 12 days to Christmas, and I'm super excited to be back on your screen. My name is Faith Imai, and this is Matters on Ground on The Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV. We hope your Christmas plans are coming out very well. I hear jingle bells everywhere and a lot of people buying Christmas stuff. Now today on Matters on Ground, we are going to be discussing three major uh, topics that are currently trending in Nigeria. Now the Omicron virus, the Omicron variant of the COVID-19 virus has actually rocked the world and a lot of of countries are banning uh, entry from other countries. Now, the country that is most hit, not by the virus right now, but by the ban, is Nigeria. And some retaliation is going on. We get to talk about that. We also get to talk about the peace walk that was cancelled by the executive governor of Lagos State, Papaji De Somolu, and of course, several other things considering matters on ground today. I have my co host in the studio. Stick around to find out who they are. Joining me this morning on the show is the one and only Osasugi Ibiayi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. And of course, Favor Obian How are Good you doing? Morning, you look well, like Christmas. You. I don't know. <laughs> but you're looking Christmas, Christmas. Thank you. Ascending <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> And so gay as well. Oh. But she would never admit. She always, you know, comes out very trying to keep it simple and all of that. <laughs> good to see you, ladies. Yes, today. good to Same see you here. too. Okay, so uh, a lot of Nigerians in diaspora, they're very, very sure, are bothered at this time. Not only Nigerians in diaspora, also some investors, talking about investors from the UK, mm. Canada, and Saudi Arabia, because the president last week made a statement was it the president of the presidency? Well, we shall got a statement that Nigeria is one of the best countries to invest in. Mm. <laughs> and when mm. I saw a chart that came out showing top 10 countries to invest in Africa, Nigeria was not even on the top 10. But we'll leave the matter for some other time. Yes. Okay, so the uh, federal government is banning flights from Canada, UK, uh, Saudi Arabia as from Tuesday. Are you expecting family members from the abroad? Uh, well, I think... Um Anybody that is in the abroad that has not made moves or made plans of coming to Nigeria as at now should better kiss that thought goodbye. Good <laughs> yeah. But do you think it would stand though? Because Nigeria is a country where we see people make one rule mm. and the next second somebody is telling you, ah, they banned flights now, but see me now. Yeah. I did the country. Do you think I, it would I wonder stand? if it would stand because how about their their medic their doctor's appointment, you know, that they have abroad? I mean mm. talking the about the, the yes. yes. mm -hmm. their medical appointments. So what what happens to that? What okay, so if we must it? all know, those people do not travel with the normal Emirates that we travel with. Mm. So mm. They, they fly private, so they can still go and come in if if as they please. Yeah. Okay, so away from that, now the, the, the idea of uh, Hadi Sirika banning flights from the UK, Canada, and Saudi Arabia, it came <laughs> as a result of retaliation. Yes. Under the umbrella of retaliation. Do you think that was the right move? See, I never thought, for a very long time now, I've never thought that I would be one to applaud a decision made by the presidency. <laughs> Honestly, um, I hear the fact that it's coming as a retaliation, though, because something like this, it should not be because you want to um, pay back or mm. prove to some people. It should be because you really have your people's interest at heart. Mm. So talking about UK and some other countries putting Nigeria on the red list, if you look at it critically, these countries, in terms of um, estimated cases of the Omicron variant, they have higher numbers than Nigeria. So I just think... For, for the UK and some of these other countries, Canada and those other countries, I think it's like, it's discriminatory for them to just quickly add Nigeria to the red list when they know that their cases are far higher than ours. So I think it's a good thing that our presidency wants to <laughs> also take the same step and, tell, and say, you know what, we're also banning you people. Yeah. But like we said earlier, some people should not come and say it, uh, we have put these, same, these countries on the red list and behind our back, they are eloping out of the country. But my major concern, Favor, I don't know if you share the same, is the, the banning and putting of those three countries on the red list 
who do you think is going to affect the most? Mm -hmm. of course Don't you think it's going to affect the Nigerians yeah. in diaspora? Because this is the festive period and a good number of them would want to come home for Christmas. Yeah. Yes. So I think the, the federal government is, you know, federal government actually, you know, put these countries on the, on the red list the way they put us on the red list because they want to stop some investors from, you know, coming in. Mm. But I think that is going to hit us the most what do you I think, think before you take that um, that kind of a decision you should put so many factors you know in place Th mm. think about your citizens now there are so many people that want to come to their family members you know this Christmas you have students you know that school abroad they want to come and you know celebrate the Christmas mm. period with their families we have friends I have a friend supposed to come you know for our wedding December 24th and mm. now she's already making plans you know to take the wedding to January so there are so many things that you put into consideration before taking such you know, drastic action. I know, you know, for once, like you said, we should applaud the presidency because most of these other countries, I don't know how they see Nigeria, mm -hmm. but I won't blame them. I, I won't blame them. <laughs> yes. When you have a country where your leaders lose the money, you know, the London money and take it abroad and invest in those countries, and these countries in turn will still tell you they don't want you in that country, then mm -hmm. what, what do you expect? So mm -hmm. I just hope that, you know, they find Do you think it. this is us, the retaliation scheme is sustainable considering the fact that even the vaccines that we use are gotten from the UK and the US. Hmm. So if we are now saying, hey, US, um, UK, Canada, don't come to Nigeria. And what if the UK and uh, those countries now decide to say, all right, since you are now independent <laughs> and self-sufficient, oh yeah, produce vaccines for your citizens now. Then well, they make with choke us. Is it, is it, is <laughs> yes, a plot twist. One of the things that yeah. those other countries looked at were, you know, if you look at the percentage of our people that are vaccinated in Nigeria, it's very, very low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they also put those things into consideration. If maybe we have had a higher number of, of citizens that are vaccinated, maybe mm. they would have, mm. you know, considered that, mm. that, okay, we are really responsible for these things. We really mm. want to take action mm. against this coronavirus. But yeah. look at the percentage, very, very low. So yeah, but but why, then, why do Nigerians and the Nigerian government like playing the victim card, though? Because I just feel they are playing the victim card. Mm. They ban you from traveling. Okay. No, Wahala. You're banning them back no. when you know you will still need them. You need them for health. You need them for loan. You need them for everything. Yeah. It's not like we are a nation where... And they ban you from traveling because they know that your people are always seeking something, one or yes. two, out yeah. there. Outside. Even if you ban them, well, it's... Like I said, the people who are going to be affected are the Nigerian citizens. Yeah, because, because Nigeria is not as, far as, the as far as Nigeria is concerned, the so-called investors, if they want to get into this country, they, they will, will get into this country. Of course. They yeah. will. I think, I think um, from these angles, we can obviously see that it's not painting us in good light. But I think from the angle that the presidency is coming from is the fact that they would just easily put Nigeria on the red list, even when they know that in terms of Omic the Omicron variant, Nigeria is not even a threat. Yeah. So even the first wave of COVID-19 that we all experienced, uh. down to the other waves that we experienced, Nigeria was not as hit as those oh, other countries. So yeah. vaccine or no vaccine, it's safe to say that Nigeria was still safer than some of, some of these countries. It's just the perception that other countries would I have. Do you understand? I think that's where the uh, grievances is coming yeah, from. Well, don't you think because this is if, a call if this coronavirus actually started from, you know, Africa, from Nigeria, meaning mm. would have been locked out. Yeah. You get that's, So yeah. it's always yeah. this Netflix. perception of whenever something like this happens, it's like Africans are the problem. <laughs> yes. Africans I, are I the remember, cause. I remember Melinda Gates and Bill Gates, you know, projecting that they would have dead bodies. Mm. Lying on the streets because of COVID nineteen, but I would all you know we have spiritual people. God, yeah. yes. but don't you think this is a call for of course. our government to even wake up and reawake? Maybe they are up, or they are mm. probably still yeah. sleeping. They need to wake up because it's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. Why is it not going to stop? Because every single time Nigeria as a nation needs one thing or the other from every nation. Now mm. look at a nation like China that we were making jest of China uh, disease. I remember when mm. COVID started, they called it the China, China disease. Mm. But we still go there and tell them, hey, anything for us. Mm -hmm. We still take loans from the country. Of so course. even China can bluff. Countries that we've borrowed from, they can bluff because they know us too well. Like, hm, this one's... <laughs> 
no level economy down, everything, everything down. So down, at yes. the end of the day, don't you think that our leaders should do better in terms of building our health facilities, trying to make new innovations health wise because health is wealth. If we of can course. if we are not healthy, how do we even spend all of the monies that we are making? Do you mm -hmm. think it's a call for the government to Of do course it, it we have been calling on them from day one, even before the onset of COVID nineteen mm -hmm. and all other variants that have mm -hmm. come up. We have been calling on the government. Imagine the one that happened last year that we had to lock down. Education suffered. Yeah. Of course, we know education has been suffering, but it became very it became obvious. Especially for people in public institutions. Yes, it became very obvious. So we should not wait for another variant to come and put chicken in our eye first before we, <laughs> before we sit up. We should, I don't know, we, don't, we should we do better. Sit up, we have just, always been hoping, though, so we are still keeping the energy. Yes, All right, so let's move away from that. Still on the Omicron virus, though. Now, Lagos State Governor Obajide Sowolu on Thursday announced the cancellation of uh, the proposed peace walk due to Omicron variant of the COVID-19 uh, virus saying he would not endanger the lives of the Goshans in his sincere search mm. for peace. I like the way they always put words together. They always have something to say. Now, in a statement issued on Thursday over the issue, the governor said that the cancellation became imperative because between uh, Tuesday, November 30, and now, there had been a significant rise in cases associated with the Omicron variant uh, of this pandemic. So I, I, I cannot wait, but quickly ask this question. A lot of events and shows are still happening mm. in Lagos and still happening around Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Why the cancellation? Why so concerned? Mm. Do you think he cancelled it because of Omicron or he cancelled it because he was going to walk alone? It, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was forces it, it beyond his control. Because, talking about Omicron variant mm. now, yesterday, the governor still had, you know, a cooking competition with white money from Big Brother Ninja. So what are we saying? Yes. You no, know, so many, so many people withdrew from you know the, the peace walk. Mm. So I, I'm sure the governor saw you know the, that the turnout is going to be low. Mm. Even the Lagos State um, University students that even promised you know to <laughs> you cannot back walk. on those. You cannot also. back on them. I trust them. They just said that, and on that day they withdraw as usual. Mm. So I'm sure you know they've weighed their options and see and saw that no, it does it this is not going to work. So let's just put it on. Omicron variant. Do you think oh, well, so? Yeah, well, I'm thinking a lot of things right now. <laughs> and partly, I don't want to say half of the things I'm thinking because it might seem like they're insightful, actually. Mm. So, first off, the peace walk, I was never in support <laughs> of because I just thought this is another way to stylishly deviate from the matter and just sweep things under the carpet. I mean, that's okay. We are now one Nigeria. That's what we have been screaming since they won. We're now on Nigeria, and now, okay, fine. When I was just finally warming up to the peace, okay, let's just walk the walk now. Excuses. Did so, you say you were warming up to the peace? I walk? was. I was warming up. I, lucky, I was warming up to the mm. peace walk because I just felt okay, fine. Uh, what else can we do? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was thinking, <laughs> what else can we do? Let the people that have lost loved ones at the Lekki Toge, let them find some sort of solace and let's just move on. Because we're dragging the issue and it does not seem like it's, it's going you anywhere. Know, okay, if you they don't want to find rest, if they want to find peace, then give them justice. Exactly. That's, that's, what, about people, peace. that's what, what people, people are crying for. for. We need justice. Yeah. Justice for the life lost, justice for people just who have been abused. Justice, justice, justice is what people are crying out for. Not yeah, a peace, peace walk. walk. Why then a peace walk if you think there was no issue in the first place? Mm -hmm. Because the federal government is still in denial of anything that happened at Lekki Tollgate. But this is and not the, the state, federal government, this the is the state, state governor. Who, mm -hmm. in his words, forces beyond his, control. his control, forces beyond his power, forces beyond him, did it? You know, he says one thing. And he says another mm. thing. Acts like he has amnesia. He, I feel like he's under a lot of pressure, pressure to make things yeah. right. Mm -hmm. You know, wakes up every day and they're like, hey, fix your state. Yeah. Fix this mess. Fix it. And so he wakes up with some crazy ideas. I don't know who advises him. They'll say today is peace work. Mm. Tomorrow, the judicial panel of inquiry brought out the result and said that there were killings. Mm. And the next day you're saying, let's put all of this behind who? Yeah. Mm. Is it that easy? So This is not about... 419, no, it's not money that was lost. Lives. Lives that were lost. So you just want to put everything behind you and let's move on. So why do we now have a legal system? Why do we now have a justice system? Why, why is it even existent in the first place? If that's the case now, if people lose election, no need to go and 
drag your opponent to court. Let's just go for peace. Yeah, I guess, I guess no that's the to, only no thing. No need to drag your opponent to court now. Let's just shake hands and say, well, you win me today. I go win mm. you tomorrow. But you see the politicians dragging their opponent to court and saying that they are going to return mandates to themselves. If you can keep that same energy, right? If you can keep that kind of energy during election, why don't you keep that kind of energy where the lives of citizens are involved? Yeah. Mm. You want to do peace work. You want the families to keep quiet as if nothing happened. Unfortunately, even and the peace work that we're looking up to, it has been cancelled. It's now. even more painful because <laughs> they are the should. Cross funds for this peace work. Exactly. So that was, exactly. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, 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 it's very mm. annoying. All right, we'll finalize on this note. Now, last week, <laughs> during the week, we saw a report <laughs> where uh, the federal government, according to the report, it was alleged that the federal government was saying that there will be a possible delay in payment of December salary, mm. that uh, civil servants should manage their November, November salary <laughs> and know how they are going to <laughs> put themselves together. So just before the end of that week, we also saw the federal government on Thursday disclaiming that circular that purportedly, you know, advise civil servants to exercise caution mm. in spending their November salary <laughs> because of a possible delay in the payment of salaries in December. Now, the head of uh, civil service of the Federation, Dr. Fola Shade Yemirson, you know, reacted to the alleged circular uh, published by a section of the media. They keep saying mm. that, uh, said it was fake news and urged the public to disregard it. You know, it's easy for us to say it's fake news. Mm -hmm. Share the month was went. When do they to start paying them? <laughs> They are supposed to receive their salaries before Christmas yes. because, they, of course, they need the monies to go for Christmas shopping. My mother is a federal civil servant. I will be on, I will be on constant communication no, they can, they with her. They can make things right now. Yeah, they are trying to. You know, yes. you know, I would. I she. My mom has been complaining for the past months that salaries have have always been delayed. You know, it doesn't come as per when due, and mm. you know they have to wait till the end of the end of the month, you know, government workers, 25th, most of them are already yeah. smiling. So you have to wait till like 30 years sometimes, first of the following month. And I'm like, ah, when did this one start? Pass. This is recurrent expenditure. It's not supposed to be a big deal because yeah. this is something that you already know. Federal government already knows that salaries have to be paid. paid there are yes. no two ways about it. So why the delay? So she said it's something that has become a norm. So now the, the way the government is usually quick to debunk, the energy that they keep mm. with debunking, I think I love that energy. Yes. <laughs> I just hope that they are going to still keep that energy in December. Let them pay. Because my mother, like I said, the civil servant, if you pay the woman <laughs> her money, yo. so what do you think? Do you think this is just a cover or do you think it was fake news? Because the, another reason why they keep clamoring for regulation of social media and the media in general is because of fake news. Do you think yeah. this was fake news or you think See, the government is just covering up? I don't think it was fake news. Okay, fine. There are a lot of um, sources online that are not so verified. Mm. But when you now see a national publication mm. carrying news, even if it's online, mm. but it's still a national publication, then I think there should be some truth to that story. Mm. Right? Okay. So, fine. When initially, when I saw this story, I, I, I fear, oh, <laughs> 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 a friend catch me because I was like, I don't even want to imagine how this Christmas was going to be for a lot of Nigerians. Mm. And then we have, got, we have heard again now that it was fake news. Let's give the presidency, the government, the benefit of doubt. Okay, fine. It was fake news. Mm. Like you said, keeping fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm waiting we for are, the no, salary yes, to drop. Nah, let's yes. see, let's see the salary. It, it's annoying drop. because I reported that news as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I so think Kelly was now, very excited. Yeah, <laughs> now, the that, reason why she was excited is because she's not a yeah, federal government. I was worker. saying, oh, no, 30 December for civil servants. Yes. And now we're hearing is fake news because I don't understand how a secular that carries, you know, the letterhead of the civil servant, civil service rather, mm. signed, sealed. Say it's fake. I don't understand. Do you think the what, reason what why they're coming out to say it's fake is because of the way Nigeria has reacted to the of news? Of course, of course. Of course. Yes, that's one. And there was something else that happened. I can't really remember. There's something else that happened that went viral and Nigerians did not take it lightly. They also came out to say that was fake news. Okay, I think it was the NYC yeah. handbook stuff. Did, yes. Measures. Yes. And easily they came out and debunked mm -hmm. that one, Shafsha. Because I think since the NSAS protest, mm. There's this awareness that has come to the presidency that Nigerians are not going to sit back and just take things lightly anymore. Yeah. So if it was before the NSAS protest, they'd be like, eh, we mm. don't talk, we don't want to. Yeah. Do you get it? But since that NSAS protest, it's like there's this, 
there's this awakening like the, the, the rate at which they debunked though because i also remember when they said they were going to eradicate they needed some billions of dollars to eradicate malaria they came yes. out to say, no, that's not the initial yeah. the amount. also when they said they were going to borrow money from demand accounts they came out to say ah, that's not what we said though. Yeah. so every other time when they make these crazy decisions and it comes out and people have the opportunity to react because then we just buy newspaper sheets. yeah you cannot react you can only react within your circle we just vent at home yeah my dad will complain this country so aggression so to your family members so now that people can even make a full blog post a full post about how they feel their reservations and even tag the president yeah it's easy for you to even tag president muhammadu buhari and, and his the other members of the presidency mm. it becomes easier for people yeah. to air I, their I views i feel that they, they just put out the statements and waiting for the reaction mm. of the citizens this, they want to see how we grasp yeah. it. If we don't react so much, then they then let it go. But if we react <laughs> that we are ready for a protest or something, then they withdraw their statement. That's what's happening. Fantastic. It's been a great time on the show. I always say this. Nigeria matter. No, they ever finish. If we want to talk about Nigeria's problems, we're not going to leave here today. But the Christmas season is already here. The festivities are here. I can legit smell Christmas already. And I'm super excited. 2022 will be a beautiful year. But we have more shows coming. Do not miss Hot Stuff Wednesday. This Wednesday, of course, with your favorite ladies on set. Follow us on all social media platforms at TSL Nigeria TV. Stay out of trouble. Stay safe. There's something that comes with festivities, Ember Month and everything. They will tell you yeah, a lot is happening out there. So I will join the voices to say a lot is happening out there. So try as much as possible to stay safe. If you are going out, no matter how old you are, whether you are an EA, a, a, a small child or whatever it is, tell your family members or your friends or people around you where you're going to, to ensure you are safe. My name remains Faithy Mind. Till we come your way again, enjoy the rest of the day. Toodles. Stay connected to TSL Nigeria and get updates on the go all day, every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel on TSL Nigeria Space TV and join our online family.